is when to use photogrammetry and when to use LIDAR. And so with that, the base reason why you'd use photogrammetry is if you have bare earth, that's pretty obvious, uh, but its accuracy is based on an X and a Y grid. So if it's a two dimensional grid, so the location of things, uh, photogrammetry works really, really well. And even when I was a photo analyst for the Navy, we weren't using photogrammetry to determine the height of things. We were determining photogrammetry to determine the place of things. If that makes sense for some yeah. folks here. So you want to use photogrammetry for line work, road scans, things that you're going to turn into two dimensional objects. Now I know some of your viewers go, well, I can do three dimensional. Good. You can to, but what, to what level of accuracy you use LIDAR, particularly for elevation data. Um, so elevation data, whether it's tree heights, topography, buildings, uh, that's where you're going to use LIDAR a lot. Um, excuse me. Yeah, you know, the other place that you'd use LIDAR um, over photogrammetry is if you have a situation where um, there is a limited time of capture. Uh, I guess a good case in point would be uh, airports. So airports, you know, we're, we're always mapping them, you know, or they're, they're on a cycle to get mapped and imaged. Um, and so the conventional way is to either send a surveyor out or use a terrestrial scanner. Well, now with the mobile scanner type setups, um, we can wait till the airfield shuts down at night, maybe about one o'clock in the morning, scan that, you know, take a couple days, but still scan that entire thing at night. We're not limited by needing light because we're generating our own light source. Um, so we're able to get this job done in a fraction of the time, even over terrestrial scanning. And there's no impact to what we call pattern of life. Um, yeah, because you're doing you know, it in the dead of night when there's absolutely no sunlight, but you're still collecting just as precise data as you would during the day with sunlight. Yeah, or even with the, the you know, that's the most extreme case, but when you're dealing with photogrammetry, uh, especially for the folks that have, you know, like down in the southeast where you've got those rolling thunder boomers come in, and you're getting the cloud shadows in and the inconsistencies across your capture, mm -hmm. uh, that doesn't make a difference for us. We, any time of the day, as long as I, I'm not trying to fly through mist, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like dense fog clouds where I'll have the particulate aerosols, um, you know, other than that, you know, nothing really stops the sensor, which is great. Um, yeah. Some other cases where you'd want to look at that, though, is uh, like mining. When you're dealing with very, very large mining sites, um, you know, volumetric, you know, for the small sites, photogrammetry. And then the cameras are cheaper. You don't need a lot. But when you're dealing with, you know, thousands of acres being excavated at all at the same time, and you're trying to figure out yield and production rates and need the information very quickly, uh, then you're looking at LIDAR because the turnaround time, again, is like 20, maybe 30 minutes. Um, you know, some systems, if someone paid me, a decent amount we could actually stream it off the bird uh, oh, wow. so, so you could have it you know with a 5g or a 4g uh, card put into the payload we could stream that off pretty quickly um, so when you want those critical time decisions that's when you want lidar and so like the mining industry volume's important but then you know it takes on also a safety aspect they're able to image and start to see you know where cliff faces or, or cut faces are, are starting to pull away. They're able to start to look at that, you know, with the right software and see safety risks and stuff like that. 